Hiya guys, Mark here. Last week I promised you a little bit more on the shooting because the weather was drawn in. It's a lovely day today, even though it was a little bit breezy. So we have some on target now and we got some coconuts and melons to be playing with today. And who doesn't like melons, let's be honest. So I think we're going to set up over here, depending on which way the wind is blowing. Um, might come against the wall over here, the old dry stone wall in. Um, this is from around 1910. Um, this is from Jones's farm. Um, Dad Jones, I went to school with him when I was a boy back in the 1980s. Um, so the land I'm on now belongs to a friend of mine actually. Um, as, far, as far as you can see, turn the camera around, everybody you can see belongs to my friend. Okay, here's a quick one at uh, 360. But um, okay then, let's set up some targets and see what we got. Okay, so the first thing we're going to go with then is the 150 bolt. Um, in a bit of a, a rush to come out earlier, I didn't grab all my bolts, only grabbed three by mistake. And one of the bolts from last time, didn't notice, she's already cracked. So we don't have uh, two of the uh, one third bolts. That's got to be repaired. Let me go and try and use one of the heavyweight bodkins as well. See how she fares with the 150, be interesting. So let's get straight into it, let's load her up. Okay, we've got to go through the loading procedure because a lot of people like to see this. And for some people, it's the first time seeing a medieval crossbow. So you do what you do, you put your foot through the stirrup. This stops it from coming back. You press your tickler. It's not a trigger, folks, it's a tickler. You press your tickler and your nut, you rotate it until this dog section here comes to 45 degrees and your trigger now locks it in place. This year being your tiller, as in a tiller from a ship, because that's where it was taken from originally, comes back and you lock in your string. It's that simple. Now, when you're holding, they don't show us in a lot of the, the movie videos, which is wrong, of the Hollywood films. This handle is curved at this radius for a specific reason. And that's quite simply, you put your hand inside the radius. If somebody does run up and then try to jar the trigger, your hand is blocking the trigger. Your hand has become the safety catch. So that's an important tip, which they don't show you in Hollywood, nor none of the other channels which I witnessed. Okay, so now we're going to take our quarrel. It's not a bolt, it's not an arrow, it's a quarrel. It's a quarrel because it's something you don't want to quarrel with. So when you put your quarrel into your bow, make sure the nut here is locked and secure. Take your bolt, secure it into the nut. If you notice, the fingers on either side of the nut are now securing the bolt on either side. There's no sideways play in your um, quarrel. So we bring it now. There's a couple of ways you can shoot these medieval crossbows. You can shoot from the hip. It um, takes a lot of practice. Some people shoot from over the shoulder and lever with the thumb from underneath. But for me, I like to shoot it as a modern day rifle, keeping your fingers clear of the string. When you discharge your crossbow, 120, 150 pounds of string pulled across your fingers hurts. Believe me, I've done it. So you soon need to either shoot open palm or close. Now, I'm looking down the full length of the shaft of the quarrel. I'm looking directly at the target. I'm pointing the nose of the target to the head of the bolt, quarrel, to the tail of the, of the quarrel to line up my shot. I'm now squeezing the tickler. What a shot, straight in the bull. So let's take that shot again. We've spanned our crossbow. We've set the nut and the trigger. We've taken our bolt. 
replacing it in the nut. Again, look, she fits perfect in the middle of the nut. We take a step back, we look to our left and right, we're making sure there's nothing can run out and get accidentally injured. We're now lining up our quarrel. We're going to squeeze our tickler. And we keep our, tr our tickler pulled in. We don't release it straight away, it will smash the nut. Okay, so let's have a look at our process again then. So it's foot in the stirrup. Press your tickler. Set your nut, release. Check it's locked and engaged. Span your boat. Bring it up. Insert your boat. Select your target. Now we have a look at the targets now to see how they turned out. Okay guys, let's go and have a look. Let's see what we got. Now you see here now, different weights of the bolts as she's walked down the board. The, the zero is perfectly in line. I'll see the light the bolts straight at the top, the medium and the heaviest bolt at the bottom. Let's pull them out. Let's have a look at the, the bolts. So that's gone. Uh, at least quarter inch in. Yeah, so that's my thumb is. Where, how far it went into the the target? That's a good two and a half inches in. Okay, so we go go back to the passion wagon now. Um, reset. Um, bring up the three hundred and seventy five pound whip crossbow. And we have a couple of shots with that. I've seen a couple of people walking uh, a few fields over, so we're gonna move our position to where we was last week. Uh, so it gives me a, a 360 degree of coverage. They can only come into my area one way, my backstop is secure, and I know exactly what's going on. Okay, folks, the last bow you've seen was the 150 pound personnel crossbow. It would be used for guarding gates, etc., um, corridors, personal keeps, where the protection of the king was utmost. It was a device that could be quickly spanned and held indefinitely for taking out a target for protection. Whereas a bow, within a minute or two minutes of a 150 pound draw bow, your arms would have been knackered and your shot would have suffered. So now we're going over to the 375 pound arbalist. Okay, so let's have a look at cocking the arbalist. First of all, you need to set your nut. Slight different setting procedure to the other, other system. You want your nut, so the top end is in this position. As when the nut comes, the, the string comes back, it pushes the nut down and engages the sear automatic. You'll see it now. So, <laughs> Arbalist is set in now. Come back a little bit more to get all in camera for one nice flowing action. We now put a span across the string. We push it in, lock it, and hold it. And our sear is set and engaged. Okay then folks, so here we are. So the crossbow is cocked, or Arbus is co cocked. Keep your fingers well away from the string. Take your quarrel, insert it. Keep your fingers in the nut, same as before. Count your target, line it up, 